those to curse you They both go to your head Take you from the bar stool Bring you to the bed Whiskey's close to perfume Spin your senses round Till her skin's the only vision And her breath's the only sound Silver women seem to shine like Crystal holy fine white wine I'm wishing one of them was mine tonight Mahogany and mirrors Dim shine Friday light Some nights go down easy And some put up a fight Hardcore in the bar room Softened with the night Melts away by morning Sliding out of sight Silver women disappear Mahogany becomes veneer I'm wondering will she ever hear tonight Whiskey's close to pleasure Pleasure's close to pain Spill into your empty Deep into your stay The whiskey's close to pleasure Pleasure's close to pain Just pour in from the bottle And fill into your drain yeah, Silver women seem to shine like Crystal hole in fine white wine I'm wishing one of them was mine tonight Silver women disappear Mahogany becomes veneer I'm wondering will she ever hear tonight My name is Lou Mann, and uh, I've been writing songs now for about four years. You know, I really enjoy doing that a lot. It's a very special thing for me, which is kind of hard to communicate. And that's what I'm going to try to do here, is sort of communicate a little bit of that specialness, why it's so special. One of the really neat things about a song is that in three minutes time or so you can create a whole little world and you can create a whole environment and tell a whole story and convey a range of emotion and communicate with people that you've never met some kind of a feeling or thought that you've had or an experience that you've had and to be able to do that in such a, a compressed period of time and in an entertaining way is just an amazing thing to me. And I think that my favorite songs, the songs that I really like a lot, are the ones that do that successfully. I think the more successful songs, and the, the way I try to write, and to try to make my songs successful, is uh, try to create pictures with the words that I'm using so that when someone is listening to the song uh, it's almost like a movie will be playing in their mind and they will get very clear visual images from the words and the music and in addition to that I'm also trying to convey a mood and the music helps to convey that mood a lot but I think the words do as well if the mood is uh, 
whatever the mood would be, sad or happy. Uh, if the song is going to work, then the mood that I was feeling, for instance, when I wrote the song, has got to come across every time the song is played or performed. That mood's got to be recreated. Some of those moods are very difficult to talk about in words. That's another reason why I love songwriting. You can't tell people in words, or at least I can't, sitting in and talking, what a certain mood I might be feeling is. Um, how, how what's going on inside me is feeling to me. But when I write a song that's a successful song and is a successful expression of what that mood is, then I have, in ways that w words that I'm using right now can't convey, I have succeeded in getting that mood across to someone else and recreating it. I think all successful songs do that. And I, my goal as a songwriter is to do that every time I write a song. My name is Rich Young. I play the guitar. And uh, I guess I'm more of the musician type. I don't, uh, I don't really do any songwriting. But when I met Lou, uh, I was impressed with the words that he used in his songs and the moods that he was that he was able to con convey and uh, so uh, we began working together and up to this point I think it's been a, a reasonably fruitful uh, relationship I think we we get along well and uh, and I think uh, we've done some pretty good things with his with his songs uh, one of the finer things that we've done is uh, made a record at uh, Dynamic Recording in Rochester. Uh, making a record is, is one of those things you, you, can't, you can't go into expecting to make a lot of money, and certainly we didn't. Uh, we spent a lot of money and had a great deal of enjoyment out of it, and I think we learned a great deal about the about the business of promoting oneself and and how a, how a record gets made and just all kinds of of details about uh, about the business and how to get into it and uh, a number of a number of things that neither one of us was really aware of on, on a first hand basis. Uh, Of course, we'd both like to see the record go someplace, but uh, even if it doesn't, I think it's been, it's been a valuable experience that both of us will uh, like to remember. Sounding frantic, it can wait. Another cup of Nescafe, another sleepless night, another try to set my feelings straight. Work waits in the morning, and I ought to be in bed. I think I might have given up by now Instead I'm at this table With these words inside my head And these questions about what and why and how And if love if it was right Why the tears and why the fights And if love If you was wrong This can't be Another love song In this 
this empty kitchen There's a magic movie screen It's hidden that space behind my eyes Projector rolls and I review A desperate scene by scene But the ending always takes me by surprise And if love it wasn't right Why the tears and why the flights And if love it wasn't wrong This can't be Another love song Why the tears and why the fights? And if love and you was wrong, this can't be another love song. This can't be another love song. Another love song
Vicki Lee Croster. That was Jilly, right? Yeah. Did you write that song? Yes, I did. Oh, it was great. How long have you been writing songs, Vicki? For about 10 years now, together. Uh, when you started songwriting, what types of things uh, started you, caused you to want to write songs? Or oh, well, I really started when I was very young, about 12. And a friend had shown me a few chords on the guitar. And from there, I just took the chords that she had showed me and switched them up so that I could write my own lyrics to them. And I just did that as fun, you know. But for the past 10 years, I've been more serious about it. Do you uh, take your songwriting, do you, does it take you a long time to write a song? It depends. Some are very quick and others can take days or months. But usually if I get the um, music down, the lyrics aren't too much of a problem. I imagine a lot of things influence you in your songwriting. What types of things uh, throughout your 10-year career as a songwriter have uh, caused you to write songs? Um, friends, loves traveling. Um, sometimes just a character I might see on the street might spark something. Or if the well dries up, I'll just use my imagination. Oh, that sounds great. Real imagination here. Um, we were talking earlier, you said you've done some traveling. Yes, I uh, went to Europe when I was 19, after I got out of high school uh, with $200. And I stayed for five years. Five years on two hundred dollars. Oh, I'd say that that was quite an accomplishment. What uh, what do you do around town to uh, promote your songwriting, or in general to promote your songwriting? I play in some of the uh, clubs around town, and a lot of the clubs have nights where people just get together and jam, and I do that as well. I also went to New York um, a few weeks ago to try to promote some of my music. But it's a big city, you know. I have to sit back and see what happens. Was it hard knocking on those doors? Yeah, it was, because nobody will open them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you just have to keep knocking. Your uh, second song is called Costa del Sol. Uh, that sounds Spanish to me. Yes, it's the coast of the sun. It's, it's a beautiful song. I'm sure everyone's going to enjoy it. This next song, I think I'll let you go ahead and do it now. Costa del Sol by Vicky Lee Crosta. One more shot and I'll be high again High again If the car of my up and wash it down While a young man plays that familiar song Boy, you know Seen a whole day come and go What a way to go Cast out El Sit beside me, we watch the sun set To the rhythm of the cast on me Time. Drink the wine and feel so Cast out a And a young man strums an old guitar The sun's so hot One more shot and I'll be high again
back in Canada Where I long to be Night song of the whippoorwill Sounds so sweet to me I can see the northern lights glow Like a guiding light I can hear the loons cry echo Through the night I would give you all I own Leave my city home to be in Canada, sweet land of pine and I'm sitting here with Ontario. On my left is Warren Paul, Al Kautz, and on the right here is Chuck Parnell. That first song, Land of Pine and Stone, was written by Warren Paul. Uh, could you tell us something about that song? It's a song about one of my favorite places up in Canada, Westport, Ontario. I spent a good number of my years up there and was away from it for about seven years. And uh, when I went back after that time period, it just really struck me how much I missed the place, and then I wrote the song. It's beautiful. Beautiful. really paints a picture. Chuck, how long has Ontario been together? Well, we've been together as a trio since February. And prior to that, Alan Warren had uh, played as a duo, and I was working with a, a, another local band. And uh, after we dispersed, uh, I lashed down to these guys. Ah, so you guys have been playing together for longer then? 
Yeah, uh, well, Warren actually started out as a solo, and I joined him doing a duo uh, back last February. And uh, when Chuck became available, we snatched him because uh, any of anybody that has come to hear his play or if you listen to the 45 we've got out, you hear this high voice in the background, okay? And uh, it's not Valerie Short. <laughs> it's not Valerie. Like it's Chuck Parnell singing all the high parts with us. So we work a lot on our vocal work because we have the capability of doing that now. What types of thing... Uh are things are Ontario doing? Uh, your name has been in the press quite a bit lately. I saw you on the uh, television program the other day. Um, what kinds of things are you doing? I understand you have a 45 out? Yeah, we just finished that a little while ago. Uh, one side of it is the song that we just did, The Land of Pine and Stone. The other side is a song written by a fellow named uh, John Dawson. It's uh, a story about a train robbery. Uh, it took place in the late 1800s and a group called the James Gang robbed a train called the Glendale Train, and so... Before Joe Walsh joined them, right? Yeah, before Joe Walsh was with them, and uh, so we uh, threw that one on the other side, and uh, right now, by the time you people at home see this, we'll uh, hopefully have a little uh, local airplay with it. We're working on that now. It's already available at the Guitar Center, uh, David Stutzman's place, uh, and uh, we we also wanted to thank David Casperson down at Dynamic Recordings for the fine job that he did on it too and uh, he's been helping us a little bit with the promotion too. Uh, that's the recording studio? Yeah that's the, the recording studio here in Rochester that uh, has been doing a lot of work with Rascal um, well uh, Valerie and uh, Ontario we worked together on a couple of theme songs one of them is a theme song for this show and the other one's a theme song for another local morning show uh, which was all done down there too and uh, so it's it's getting kind of interesting. There's a lot happening right now, so I'm pretty excited about it. Sounds like you're making a lot of things happen for yourselves. So it will be Glendale Train that you'll be doing next, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think you'll, we'll let you guys get to it then. Okay. Ontario with Glendale Train. i 